Hello, everybody, and welcome to Absurd Hypotheticals, the show where we overthink dumb questions so you don't have to. I'm your host, Marcus Lanner, and I'm joined here today by Chris Yee and Ben Storms. Say hi, guys. Hey, I'm Chris. Hey, I'm Ben. And uh, I just kind of wanted to share, you know, sort of before we get started, uh, there's a, a news story that you may or may not have seen. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and read the, the headline first. I feel like I kind of set the stage pretty well. Uh, the headline is... Uh, Texas grandma kills 12 foot gator says she's finally avenged her miniature horse. What? <laughs> <laughs> so the other, wait, the other wait, 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 sort wait, of, Fred, the, can you just one more time so I can process this? Uh, yes. Um, Texas grandma kills 12 foot <laughs> gator says she's finally avenged her miniature horse. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot yep. going on. They also the other the other thing that's that is going on there that's not actually, you know, mentioned in the headline is that this Texas grandma uh is also the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> See that has like five different punchlines to it. It's just like punchline, okay, it's over. Nope, another one. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. We're gonna keep adding on. So 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 yeah, so so we just you know, there's there's a lot going on there. The other thing, there's also once again Buried in the article, it's mentioned that the pond where she killed the beast is the same one where her grandson, then five, fell to gator nine years ago. So what's incredible about this is that clearly we have this, like, Hatfields and McCoys style, like, escalating <laughs> vengeance thing between these this family and these gators. Yeah, so it's like, the kid kills a gator, the gator kills a horse, of course, of course. Of course, and of course. And then the grandma kills the gator... And then I think she swallows a fly, and I hope she'll die. Is that how it goes? Oh, yeah, something that like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple other important notes from the the uh, article. Um, one that that I'm still not entirely sure about. So there's a line that says that her son-in-law lured the alligator with a seasoned raccoon set over the pond. And I don't know, like, how do you season a <laughs> raccoon to attract a gator? <laughs> See, it's very funny because, like, when you said important details, I was going to call you out for using important as an adjective on anything with this article. Um, But seasoned is an even worse (laughs) adjective to go with the word raccoon. Yep. Um, The other other fun thing is apparently, so so when she, she, uh, he caught the gator there, Um, she was actually in a meeting. So the kind of just, it sort of just hung out there for a little bit. Until she was able to get out of the meeting, come home, and grab her Winchester. It was literally a Winchester uh, to kill the gator with. <laughs> I want to vote for her. Like, we're, 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 Pope County, Texas, I'm looking here. Uh, yep. I found one of the articles. My headline's slightly different. Mine is, don't mess with Nana. Grandma Mayor shoots and kills 580-pound alligator to avenge death of miniature horse. Also, miniature horse? Like... <laughs> We haven't unpacked that one yet. The the miniature horse, miniature horses are a thing. That's yeah, a they're a thing. thing. I've seen them before. Yeah. They're small horses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Is there a difference between a miniature horse and a pony? Well, yeah, a pony is a young horse. A miniature horse is a small horse. It's like a different species. Or? Yeah. Oh, it's just a like a full grown horse that's yeah, it's just smaller. little. Yeah. Oh, she looks pretty small. Do you think she rode her miniature horse as part of her campaigning? I mean, maybe. I don't well, I guess not anymore. Well, yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Uh, it does say that she's looking forward. Where to go? She's anticipating the alligator meat and boots that her quarry will yield. Apparently, <laughs> so she has plans. She's going to use the whole gator. So yeah, you know, that's, that's good. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of boots. Yes, five hundred eighty pounds of boots. I want to see this turned into a series, like a Netflix series, Hatfields and McCoys, but but just this. yeah, just gators and like. I'm assuming West Texas. I'm not sure exactly where Polk County I mean, is, but it feels like a West based, Texas kind of place. Based on the story, it sounds like the humans are at fault here. They started the war. Right, exactly. Really, you know, they brought this upon themselves. That horse yeah. did not have to die. Yeah. I mean, it's a five-year-old. Like, you shouldn't take re- societal revenge against a child. That's also true. That said, gators probably aren't very good at identifying which of us are, you know, also, children, which how, of us are bigger. How old are the gators? Maybe they're five year old, years old, too. That's that's a good point. What's the it gator did, equivalent? I mean, it did eat a miniature horse. What if... Okay, hear me out on this one. What if they had never seen a person before? They had seen a miniature horse and a five-year-old, and they thought that that was a full-size horse <laughs> and a full-size person. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what they were dealing with. It was a case of mistaken identities. Tragic, I thought, but understandable. <laughs> I didn't mean to bite the horse. I thought it was still really far away. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be fine. <laughs> 
I have terrible depth perception. Forces of vision any closer it may appear. <laughs> oh my god, this is buck wild. I want like, I don't know. I, I want to, yeah, I do want a Netflix show on this. I just want to know more about Nana, the right? mayor of Polk well, County. Well, I think, I think the show would be from the Gator's pers- perspective. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I like that. That's a good angle. Because they're the underdog right now, so. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are not a news show, so we're going to have to actually answer some questions, um, hypothetically. Mm-hmm. And our first question for today is, what if roller skates were permanently attached to your feet? Chris, you want to start us off? <laughs> <laughs> right. Usually you introduce us. You didn't that time. <laughs> I mean, you, that's like your baton to grab, like. <laughs> um... <laughs> So first I wanted to look at like, so I did like daily life stuff and I wanted to look at like the positives and the negatives. You want to do the parameters first? Oh yeah, I can do the parameters. So the roller skates are permanently on your feet and you have to deal with the wheels. So you can't like glue them and you can't wear like a giant boot over it that like covers the wheels so you can just walk around. Or like replace the wheels with non-wheel objects. Right. So you have to deal with the wheels because that's the whole point of this question. Um, we also said that the roller skates are invulnerable, so you can't like burn them off and you can't, they don't like fall apart. So like 10 years from now, they'll still be on your feet. Got it. So those are the rules that we set. And I wanted to look at the pros and cons of this situation. So the pros, you're slightly faster (laughs) and you can go places. (laughs) Like if there's a place that's walking distance, you can get there slightly faster. That's really the only pro. <laughs> it's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's easier to go downhill. Cons column, harder to go uphill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really, that one's a real up and downer. So starting your day, getting out of bed. Well, first, I, like sleeping with these on would be really awkward, I think. <laughs> it just oh, feel yeah. really awkward. It wouldn't be harder to sleep. I mean, eventually you get used to sleeping with these, but it would feel weird. It's going to be hard to sleep with somebody with these, like, because they're going to be like, oh, we're getting into bed. Why haven't you taken off your roller skates? <laughs> but eventually they would know this is like a condition that you have. I don't think they're going to know you long enough because it's going to be like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to date the guy where roller skates and bed are his thing. I mean, you have a go-to first date option, clearly, at least. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's your like only go-to first date option. Well, yeah. So you get out of bed. And usually when I get a bit, I take a shower. That's like the first thing I do. Taking a shower for some reason seems like a lot harder than everything else, just in my mind. Oh, God. Yeah. Like, I don't know why, actually. You're going to need a you're going to need a grab bar. The thing is, the the tub is very slippery. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, I guess it's the material of the tub. Also, like if you have one of those shitty Home Depot ones, like the the barely thick enough plastic i think you can just like put your foot through it which would be a bad day you're like st- standing still and you have to like I, at least i like rotate a lot kind of when i'm showering <laughs> i don't like spin around that's, that's what it sounded like i, I was saying <laughs> but like you have to clean your back and you have to clean your front you have to like turn around a few times when you said that, what I'm seeing in my mind is that it's just like a compulsion you have. It's not something you control. It's just like, I don't know, whenever I shower, I just kind of like rotate I have to some. spin. <laughs> don't you guys do that? He's always a little bit off-center for the water, like, turns him as, he, as it pushes against yeah, him. Yeah, because I'm on wheels now. <laughs> um, yeah, so showering is going to be a little more difficult, but I think you can manage, actually. And then after you shower, you have to put on your pants, and that's a problem. So... Ooh. I don't know if you've ever tried putting on pants with like shoes on or boots, but it's pretty difficult. On and off, both very difficult. So I guess you just need like tearaway pants. All your pants would be tearaway pants. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you get tearaway pants on? Um, you need how... tear tear on pants. <laughs> so how are how do tearaway pants actually work? Are they just like buttoned? Yeah, I think they're reusable. I think you can you button them up the side or something. Yeah. And you'd also need tearaway underwear, which I don't think they make, but (laughs) that's important. You don't want to wear the same underwear for your entire life. And then I would say that your entire home would probably have to be carpeted just to make it easier for you to get around. I guess it's not necessary, but it makes it easier. Also quieter. Yeah, it makes it quieter, too. That'd be really annoying, actually, the the noise. Do not move into, like, a multi-story apartment. (laughs) Yeah, or live on the first floor if if you're going to do that. 
what if you were living on the first floor and the person above you literally had roller skates on all the time? And you're just like, what are they fucking doing? I can't <laughs> understand this person. Well, what's great, what's great too is that I feel like, are they wearing roller skates all the time? Is the kind of thing you sarcastically ask when you're trying to figure out why they're making so much noise and you go upstairs and they actually will be wearing roller skates and you feel kind of bad. Or you're like, what are you doing, idiot? <laughs> uh, also that, probably mostly that one, actually. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely gonna be a moment where you see, like, your neighbor going up the stairs, like, struggling with the rollerblades, and you're just like, fucking take them off! <laughs> take them off! Like, the solution is so easy! So I guess you have a sign on your door saying, I can't take off my roller skates. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> I kind of want to put that on my door, just like... <laughs> I, I think actually just all your shirts say that, too. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have that phrase visible somewhere close to you. Yeah, maybe like some business cards as well, just to like pass out. <laughs> yeah. And then leaving your house, obviously stairs are going to be a problem. That's, I mean, I think they're doable still, though. You it's just, just have to be if, very, if very up, careful. Yeah. If you mess up, it's it's high stakes. I mean, skates have like stoppers on the front, right? So you can like go on your tippy toes, I guess. Yeah. That might help. That can help. Um, And just hold on to the handrail. And then driving to work. I don't know exactly how this would affect it i think it would be because you have to push down the pedal so i actually thought about driving a little bit i want up not really using it but i I feel like it's gonna be pretty bad actually because like one we need to shift between like the brake and gas pedal that's gonna be very tough yeah well because i look try to look more into this and i wanted to like find out how far apart the wheels are and how wide the gas pedal is because if the gas pedal is smaller than the wheels are, are apart, then the pedal is going to go in between the wheels and it's going to get caught. Yeah. Oh, are you thinking like, are you thinking like, uh, like 60s, 70s ass, like two oh, wheels? I was, yeah, I was thinking of like the four wheels next to each other, like side by side roller skates. Okay. I, I mean, not that it probably matters much, but I did roller blades because they're fucking cooler. And that's yeah. what I had as a that's kid. That's what I had in my mind is the four one, the, the car style ones. I kind of switch between the two. <laughs> Ben's like, I, I'm, I'm going to be a neutral party. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take sides in this squabble. Yeah, so driving will be a problem. But if you live close to work or something, you can just roller roller skate. It's no, That'll be easier. Um, but if it snows, then like walking in the snow, that's going to be really tough. Oh, yeah. Because like walking in like one foot high snow is already pretty difficult. On the bright side, if there's enough, if there's just enough snow to cover up the wheels while you're walking through the snow, people will be like, "Oh, that dude's just wearing boots." He's just a normal guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's For just once a normal guy. Life, He's slightly normal. taller, though. <laughs> yeah, that that snow must be really dense over there. You're just walking right on top of it. And then one of the last things I found was going to the airport. So you can't really travel like anywhere that requires flying because they want you to take your shoes off, and you can't. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Also, it's not really a red flag, but kind of just, like, a really big, yeah. I guess, yellow flag when, like, some dude just, like, I got rollerblades and, like, you can't wear those on the plane. It's like, I can't take them off. And they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> also, I think um, I found that they banned Heelys in airports at some point. They never say anything about roller skates, but I assume if Heelys are banned, then roller skates are banned. <laughs> I'd imagine so, yeah. Heelys should just be banned. Uh, also that, yeah. Period. <laughs> yeah, I never went through the Healy phase there was def- there was one particular kid in my high school who had Healy's and wanted to use them all the time but was not good at them <laughs> and so like basically what he would do is he would like be at the edge like the side of the hallway and like clawing along the wall with his hands and lockers to like balance if you understand what I'm saying yeah mm-hmm. like he would just be like walking with his hands on the wall as he like wheelie down the hallway and like bumping into like a lot of people and it went on for like months there were a lot of people in my school that had heelys oh yeah there's a lot of people who had them but you know most people use them fairly responsibly yeah but enough about complaining about heelys yeah anyway (laughs) that was basically my answer um marcus what do you have so yeah so rather than daily stuff you can manage to do a lot of stuff like it's more of an inconvenience for most things so i was trying to think like what do i think i could not do at all and try to make it work and so i was thinking a beach trip is probably gonna be up there on the scale of hardest things to do yeah (laughs) sand (laughs) yeah so definitely sand is the first problem so it's like how do you move on the sand and i was thinking of all different ways to modify the roller blades but i was like one if i can't change what the wheels are 
I can't really do much. Um, and like tire, like little tires maybe would not help you all that much. <laughs> Be adorable though. Yeah. So we can't really modify the roar blades. So the next step is let's modify the sand. Hmm. So even like wet sand, you're not going to be able to roll a blade. You're just going to sink right through it. But if you you may know, when lightning strikes sand, it fuses the sand into glass. Oh, which okay. <laughs> so glass Ow. is something you can totally skate on. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, can you create something to turn the sand to glass, like as you're skating? So obviously. You need heat. So I was like, can you get flamethrowers or something to just shoot in front of you to fuse the sand into a path that you can then skate on? To make your beach trip safer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything about safety, Ben. Oh, okay. My mistake. So fun fact about sand. It melts at 1600 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's pretty hot. Yeah, you need a high temperature. <laughs> Which you're just not, you're not getting there with fire. So I was like, shit. And then I was like, well, what about electricity? And uh, obviously you can't make lightning happen. Um, so I was like, what can you do with regular electricity? And I found a YouTube video where someone just has a typical 120 volt outlet. They use a, what they call a high voltage transformer, which is basically what, how a microwave functions. And they can take that 120 volts and actually jump it up to 2,000 volts. Which, based on that same YouTube video, is enough to make sand into glass after, like, a second or two. So, you can, like, get... You can carry a 120-volt power source on your back. And so what you're going to have to do is basically, like, make a, like, fishing pole arm, like a carrot-on-a-stick type thing that goes in front of you. Um, and probably a good distance because you need like a second or two. So the way I imagine it is like you have two arms that go out. At the end of those arms, what touches the sand is like two like elongated areas where like the current's running through. So you have like a, a longer section that's getting electrocuted. And you basically just connect them and have just this line of electricity a good distance in front of you. That's going to turn the sand into glass. Now, you have a problem now it's that you just heated the kill this. everyone in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you don't walk into people on the beach normally anyway, so you just go in areas where there's not so many people. I, I also appreciate that you just said you have a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> Only one. <laughs> just the one problem. One prob- the one problem that I'm, I'm talking about specifically right now <laughs> <laughs> is that the, you've just, you know, turned the sand to glass, but... You did that by still melting it and making it 1,600 degrees. So I think you're going to also have to have a little um, water spray ahead of you. You have to cool it down. Yeah, so maybe like halfway down your arms going forward is like a water spray to help cool it down so it's hard enough for you to skate on. Or else you're just going to skate onto molten sand. um, Can can glass cool down that fast? Anything can cool down that fast. (laughs) (laughs) It may shatter. I don't know. I hope not. (laughs) Um, but I guess if lightning strikes the beach and the wave goes over it, I don't think it ruins the beach glass. Unconfirmed. <laughs> I'm, I'm jumping through a lot of hoops, but the, the mental image of you having like this fucking Frankenstein contraption on you, literally annihilating the sand as you go forward so that you can rollerblade on it <laughs> is just too awesome for me to let go. So <laughs> guys have any other problems you noticed with this thing? <laughs> Nope, nope, it's nope. Pretty, pretty solid plan. I think you covered your, all your bases. <laughs> it's okay, safe. Fine. <laughs> By OSHA like, standards, it's safe. <laughs> Sound like you guys might have some things I weren't working for. <laughs> I was hoping to address those concerns, but I guess it's perfect. Um, so what else do you do at the beach? The next thing I was thinking of uh, is swimming. And this one actually I found trickier than the sand. So my first thought is to do like a jet ski type thing where if you, you know, you're doing a water sport, which I think I would count. Um... The problem is, you know, jet ski, not jet skis, uh, water skiing, Mm. water skiing type thing. So the problem is water skis are designed to kind of stay on top of the water a little easier. So I I kind of decided that it was the equivalent of barefoot water skiing was going to be rollerblading water skiing. And to barefoot water ski, 
you need to be going 45 miles an hour or else you just fall into the water. Oh. So, yeah, it's really not super doable. <laughs> and I don't think you have enough energy left in your pack to give yourself like a rocket boost. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just straight swimming, I think, is actually out of the question because the pretty world blades are pretty heavy, and I don't think you can really keep yourself aloft easily um, just under your own power. And you have an electric current like shooting out of your roller skates. So <laughs> we can take off the problem. backpack. <laughs> you can take off the backpack before yeah. you go swimming. Uh, it'll be attached to like your beachy um, T-shirt that says, "I cannot remove my roller blades." <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> also, caution: high voltage. <laughs> right. <laughs> Need a lot of disclaimers. <laughs> if you're reading this, get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> so I guess the la- like the other thing I thought you could do is like you can maybe just embrace the heaviness, like the heaviness of your of your footwear, and kind of do like the Iron Boots from Legend of Zelda games, where you just walk on the ocean floor with some scuba gear on. I don't think they're that heavy. It's enough to keep you. They're, it's enough to keep you down. I mean, they're gonna be like uh, they're not like they to be like like forty pounds. <laughs> I looked. Okay, at, fine. They're like six pounds. Yeah, I looked it up. Six pounds? Yeah. Okay. So they're in a weird in-between where they're not going to help you sink and they're not going to let you float. They'll just drown you, not in a fun way. <laughs> so it's just going to be absolutely the worst. And I was going to keep trying to find solutions to swimming, but then I got the mental image of trying to surf. Oh, God. <laughs> I just, <laughs> just going to get past that where it's just like how hard surfing already is and then trying to do that stand-up when you're literally on wheels. Right. Wait, can you? I'm gonna actually. I didn't Google surfing. I do not think this is ever <laughs> remotely possible. Surfing with rollerblades on. If it is, I want to see it. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go. Uh, video. What the fuck? Surfing with roller skates. Funny surf video. What? It's a thing. No way. This dude's doing it. What? He is. He's doing it. He might be doing it. He's not standing up. He's just like four. Oh. Oh, he did it! <laughs> what? <laughs> he did it! Why did he? Why did he even try this? He did have the. He did have your version of roller skate, though. It was not roller blades. Ha! Ah, we have the better style. <laughs> yeah, so you can surf easier <laughs> with four blade things. I just watched the video. <laughs> <laughs> His stance is very funny. <laughs> it is as, it it's, is it's as not funny a cool, as it is unbalanced. It's not a cool surfer stance. <laughs> We will we will uh, link the video on Facebook or something yes. when this episode comes out. Um, and so I think the last thing I kind of talked about was I was looking at, at this, the issue of sand. So you cannot remove these roller blades. If they get sandy, you're fucked. Yeah, sand gets everywhere. Sand gets everywhere, and you're absolutely fucked. Uh, the the electric path that you're skating on helps a little bit. <laughs> the 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 frozen the. Uh, molten glass path that you're skating on does help a little bit but it's still like in the air and it just gets everywhere the only viable existing solution i saw is they have what they call boot gaiters which are basically like tall socks without the foot part that you like put over your boots while hiking to um you know prevent sand and dirt from getting into your boots how do you get them on you can kind of get it around somehow i think you can dangle something they're usually kind of elastic so they'll Hug your ankle. But at the same time, you're going to have the problem that you're going to get weird suntans. Like, you can only look like you've gone to the beach in, like, knee-high socks, which is crazy. And then also, if you're wearing shorts in addition to that, either your legs don't get tan or exactly your knees get tan. (laughs) (laughs) Although, if you get exactly tan knees and then because you're safety conscious, wear knee pads while you're rollerblading. Oh, it evens it out. It's perfect. I mean, at that point, just wear a full body suit. It's an idea. Although, that's going to be very hard to get on over the rollerblades. That is true. Tear, tear away bodysuit. <laughs> <laughs> Just like have someone sew the shape of your body and then copy it and then sew them together from <laughs> one, from one front and one back. But speaking of your, of your, of your uh, roller blades becoming uncomfortable, I started this question by looking at stinky feet about what's going to happen if you don't remove your shoes for a long time and immediately abandon the idea because literally the first thing that happens is like first you're going to get rashes, then you're going to get blisters. Then they're going to get infected, and they're going to have to amputate. And I'm like, well, I didn't want that to be what I talked about for 10 minutes. It does get rid of the roller skates. <laughs> does get rid of the roller skates. They still are on your feet. It's just you don't have your feet anymore. Right. You. They are on your feet. You are not. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. Um, like I said, the sand is a big problem. But luckily, 
there was um, an answer on the internet about how not to get sand in your shoes at the beach. Um, this person, I will say, is very confident in their answer. So here's how they start their question, or their, their comment. So, when I was on holidays, I figured this out, dot dot dot. I'm so smart, winky pee face. Joke, I bet you all probably know this already, but just in case you don't, read on. You might find it useful, smiley face. If the beach is lumpy slash bumpy slash ripply slash wavy, open parentheses, you know what I mean, right? No. Do not, <laughs> I repeat, do not walk on the high bits, if that makes any sense. Walk in the bits that sunken or lower, okay? Question <laughs> mark? Sorry, I really can't explain it that well. I can't think or type properly at the moment. New paragraph. Hope you understood me, though. Sorry if that was a crap tip, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> what? I understand <laughs> his advice. He just said it strangely. That's the only part I understand. So I guess he succeeded? <laughs> <laughs> just the amount of times they're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm not explaining this well. When, like, it's not that complicated right. concept. <laughs> like... Hey, how not to get sand in your shoes. Do not walk on the high bits. <laughs> Enjoy the tip. He likes emojis, apparently. Yeah, this is what this was written by like the next, uh, probably next best-selling author, to be honest. I don't think qual- writing gets a higher quality than this. Ben, how are you going to deal with these rollerblades just in your in your life? Yeah, so so I decided to ignore just the actual like li- living portion because I knew you guys had that part. So what I decided to do... Um, the sort dying of, portion. Right, yes. No. Um... <laughs> Uh, I, I, I decided sort of similarly to a lot of our, you know, what kind of job can you do um, takes on a lot of these questions. Uh, I specifically went to, uh, is there a way that you can use this situation uh, to do sports more good? Um, <laughs> hey, Ben, the sports guy. I am the sports Welcome guy. Welcome to Ben's part of the podcast, the sports part of the podcast, where we ask, can you do sports good? Yeah. Can you sports? <laughs> Let's see. Um, so, so first off, I'm going to sort of make the assumption here that you can convince whatever regulating bodies regulate the sport in question, uh, to allow you to participate while wearing rollerblades, because I feel like <laughs> most of them sue them because it's like a physical condition that you have. Right. So I think you'd, I, I don't know. I, I think you'd have a decent, I don't know. I don't think it would actually fly in real life, even if you <laughs> had like mutant roller skate feet. Um, they'd probably figure out, I don't know, who knows, but regardless, um, just assume that yes, you are allowed to participate in these events. Um, so first, then here's a hypothetical for you. Sure. Um, before, so imagine you are the head of the Roller ho- Blade Hockey League, mm-hmm. and someone writes you a letter saying, "Hey, can I participate using Roller Blades? Yes or no?" Are you, I mean, obviously the answer is yes, but is it too obvious a question where you're nervous about sending that email back? Uh, yes, I'm a hundred percent nervous about how that could be construed. I'd probably link like a picture of rollerblades to specify that these are the kind of rollerblades we're talking about, not like yeah. wheels with knives on them or something. Yeah, just send them like the legal paragraph of exactly what rollerblades are acceptable, and be like, "These are the rollerblades we accept." Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's like yes, but I don't want to just say yes to your. I don't think it's overly vague, but I'm not going to say just yes. Yeah. So anyway, getting getting to the sports. Um, so first off, sort of sports that go bad, which is most of them. Um, really just sort of start basically anything on grass. You're not going to do that well in <laughs> because you cannot move as well as someone not wearing roller skates uh, on grass. It's just not going to happen. So I'll get into a couple specifics as we go, but just sort of in general blanket statement grass-based sports not good for rollerblades um next uh uh ice hockey so i know this sounds very dumb because there is you know rollerblade hockey that's a thing but not on ice not on ice um but it turns out you actually i found uh, a video on youtube of a guy rollerblading on ice it's actually possible uh it's not great (laughs) <laughs> like surfing is it as funny as the surfing video <laughs> um it's pretty full so okay so the start of it's not great because it's really hard for him to get going because you know the wheels spin and they're on ice so he can't really get traction <laughs> um, but eventually he gets going but then it's very funny when he tries to stop with like a hockey stop where you like slide <laughs> into it sideways you know and he just immediately wipes out because they're fucking roller blades <laughs> i can imagine it right now yeah it's pretty great um yeah, so ice hockey probably not going to work that well either because, yeah, just wear ice skates. Um, I know I mentioned grass sports in general, but football I kind of want to have a quick segue into. There's actually an expression in talking about football 
um, when someone, if they like get blocked and they can't get any traction and just get like pushed backwards helplessly, they call that getting put on skates. So whoever came up with that actually already knows just how bad this is going to go. Yeah, they tried it out. Yeah, I think, yeah, they actually probably did try it and realize they just on a whim. But um, yeah, it's not going to end well for you in general. Uh, and then final, like, very bad going sport that I thought about is like boxing slash MMA. So I will say, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to point out that with MMA, I think that if you could successfully kick someone in the head, you would win. But I think that's going to be really <laughs> tricky. <laughs> <laughs> and I think if you don't do that, you're just entirely host <laughs> immediately. Um, they they do weigh six pounds. Yeah, so that's kind of kind of like you know you're kind of like you got this one shot, um, and it's gonna be pretty obvious what you're trying to do. <laughs> I think, <laughs> uh, and pretty easy to avoid. And you're probably gonna fall over in the process of trying to do it. But <laughs> if you can land it. You probably win and may kill the other guy. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, you could like roll around the ring and like gain momentum and then like clothesline them. I mean, could you though? Like, <laughs> no, no, here's what you do. Here's what you do. You roll around the ring in a circle and then you go in for like a tight circle around them. Like where you can like, you can like spread your feet apart, like a little spread eagle. So you're like going in a fast circle and then just throw a whole bunch of punches. I have I have a counter to your strategy. As you're skating around the rink, the other person just walks across the rink and waits for you, and you can't change direction fast enough to avoid them. <laughs> well, then you just got one punch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so anyway, that one, probably not going to go that well. So now let's get to um, the... There's a, an interesting sport, uh, which is basketball. So first off, you are not going to be good at basketball. I want to go ahead and start that out. This could probably be a bad sport, but there's an interesting wrinkle to it. But you're not going to be good because on offense, basketball requires being able to, A, change direction quickly, which you cannot do, and B, you know, jump. Like jumping, I don't think you can jump that well, <laughs> right? You got two extra inches of height. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess, technically. Um, but yeah, so that's not great. And then on defense, lateral movement is very important. And that's like what you're the worst at on roller skates is lateral movement counterpoint ben dribbling is counted in steps correct that was actually my next point so <laughs> so <laughs> the, the rule traveling in basketball is basically when you have the ball if you're not dribbling you get two steps and the nba rules are very clear in their definition of a step and the fact that it involves picking up one of your feet so <laughs> technically See, you don't could need get to the ball and not have to dribble However, you're still going to be really bad at basketball because you're just going to be – you're like, even though you don't have to dribble, you're just drifting forwards whatever speed you were going before and you can just get like pushed a little bit and you're probably going to fall over <laughs> because you're on roller skates holding a basketball. So – Can your teammates push you – can your own teammates push you forward to give you faster momentum? I mean probably, but I think it's just faster for them, for them to run with the ball, right? <laughs> Like, no, you, oh, yeah. They give you the ball, you hold it up over your head so no one can reach it, and then they just all push you, and the other team's going to try to push you backwards. <laughs> and that's, that's a what the losing sport is be But fun. they have an extra person because you're holding the ball, so they're always oh, yeah. going to win. That's true. See, it doesn't work. That's why that reason doesn't make sense. Also, being tall is a very popular basketball strategy. That's also so Unless true. you are really, really the tallest, <laughs> you cannot hold the ball too high. So, so, so me personally, if I were to be this person on roller skates being pushed with the ball over my head, there'd probably still be someone who were, for whom the ball would be at like slightly below eye level on the <laughs> basketball court. So <laughs> slightly below nipple level, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, basketball, interesting rules wrinkle, but I think maybe not your best option because other than being able to kind of break a rule of basketball, you are terrible at literally every other aspect of, aspect of basketball. So there is one one sport where you technically would be quite good, and that is running. <laughs> <laughs> so and that's running. I mean, so here's the, the argument is that once again, the governing body has decided that that this is fine for whatever reason. <laughs> as the as the room burns around him. Right, yeah, exactly. This is fine. So speaking of the room burning around them, let's let's talk about um speeds at various distances and like like time it takes for various people and you know world records and whatnot so uh 
I, I have a set of running records and skating records for various distances. Um, the running records are from the, the IAAF, which is the International Association of Athletics Federations. Uh, and the skating records are actually not world records. They are from the from USARS, which is USA Roller Sports. So they are American records, I'm assuming. They're all set in America, at least. Um, so these aren't, like, the best, probably. But I can't imagine they're too far off because it's goddamn, like, competitive speed rollerblading. I don't think it's a huge market. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. But fun fact, the, the record for the 100 meter on rollerblades... It's actually slower than Usain Bolt's 100-meter running record by about half a second. What? Ooh, yes. I mean, possible? it makes sense to me. It's it's like right, how you exactly. count on a cheetah over very short distances. Exactly. It's it's a lot easier to get started running than rollerblading. So it actually does make sense. So so there you actually would be slower. You would you would not be a like. I mean, to be fair, we're comparing you to Usain Bolt, so maybe you do okay, but. <laughs> You'd be on relatively even footing if you were also, you know, one of the best roller players in the world. So it's not that helpful. But 200 meters, you gain a little bit. You're about two and three quarter seconds faster. 400 meters, you're almost 10 seconds faster. 1,000 meters, you're 48 seconds faster. Ooh. 1,500 meters, you're a minute, minute and 15 faster. And a 5K, you go from a 12.37 5K when you're running to a 7.15 skating, which is over five minutes faster. All the way up to, wow. I found uh, marathon times. So the the marathon like running record um, was actually just set when we we're recording this uh, earlier this week. Just actually. now, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it was actually it was actually set uh, for us currently uh, the Sunday of this week. We're recording it uh, for people in the future where you're listening to this podcast. Stop dating our podcast, Ben. We record these on the day they release. Ah, suck it, Marcus. It's a live show. Can't wait to watch the World Series today. <laughs> Man, I can't believe the Mets pulled it out in the end. <laughs> That's literally impossible. <laughs> what are you talking not, about? That's happening. Not it's just on the because TV. of the records of baseball, but because of the Mets. But yeah, so the, the marathon record for running is two hours, one minute, and 39 seconds. For roller skating, it is one hour, 16 minutes, and 48 seconds, which is a gain of 44 minutes and 29 seconds. So yeah, you could be a pretty good distance runner technically yeah kind ben, of. tell me more about how roller skating is faster than running <laughs> i did with a graph <laughs> that i can't show on this podcast <laughs> i got a graph and a half ben's like what are you talking about i just did <laughs> that's literally why i spent a few minutes explaining to you marcus i wish you'd been paying attention <laughs> anyway that's basically what i have that's great you know what else we have some great products for our listeners take a listen this week's ads are on vacation. Instead, jam to these sick tunes. I can't focus on what needs to get done. I'm on notice, open that shit all right. You think I'm tepid, but I'm misdiagnosed. Cause I'm a stalker, I seen all of your posts. Ah, and I'm just trying to play it cool now. But that's not what I want to do now. And I'm not trying to be with you now, you know mm-hmm. You make it difficult to not overthink And when I'm with you, I turn all shades of pink I want to touch you, but don't want to be weird It's such a rush, I'm thinking, wish you were here uh, And I'm just trying to play it cool now But that's not what I want to do now and I'm not trying to be with you now, you now. But I could be a crush, I could throw you for a rush, I could hope and text me so I could tell you I've been thinking about you.
All right, now that we're back from commercial break, I can give you guys a baseball game World Series update. Um, right now, we are in the middle of the seventh inning stretch, and the New England Patriots have two men on against the Toronto Blue Jays. They've just found the fourth ball to keep the inning going, so it's going to be a tight game. So it's really anybody's game at this point. But you actually uh, picked... Why did you say one actual baseball team? Yeah, you've <laughs> picked an actual baseball team. Aren't they also a hockey team, the Toronto Blue Jays? No. <laughs> Maple Leafs. Toronto Maple, Maple Leafs. Leafs. Maple Leafs. That's... Important, not leaves. Fuck. Hey, <laughs> Chris, edit in Toronto Maple Leafs. I was accidentally semi-accurate. God, I, f- I know nothing about baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you hate it so much. I do hate baseball. Well, you know, I don't even hate baseball. It frustrates me. Like, Is that because I, of the nature of the sport or because you're a Mets fan? Well, it's a little bit because I'm a Mets fan, but more so it's the sport for how popular it is and how many people go see it. It's not fun or interesting. I mean, is it popular in the rest of the country or is it just Boston? No, it's popular in the rest of the country. Not as much as it used to be, but it is. Yeah, it's popular in the rest of the country. And, like, it's a day out, I guess. But they even call it a pastime, not a sport. Okay, they do also call it a sport. I don't think they've... They also refer to it as a sport. <laughs> I want to make that clear. <laughs> yeah, but they don't call football a fucking pastime. Um, anyway... <laughs> The reason know, I'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna ride my salt train right into my answer. Uh, <laughs> well, why don't you introduce the question, Marcus? <laughs> I was about to, guys. I'm not gonna jump the horse like that. That's a baseball term, jump the horse. Is it? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, what if you had to improve baseball? Because the World Series is tomorrow. Yeah, and you know, if they get this, they can improve it um, by the time the World Series yeah, starts. Yeah, they have a whole day to improve it. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I'm not going to make too many radical changes, so I think they can make implement my strategy okay. for the big game. So first off, I've jumped, went deep into the tank and find out, try to find the things that really I hated about baseball. <laughs> so here's my list of things I did I do not like. Pitching is boring. Like the idea that 70 percent of the time nothing happens in your sport is just not okay. Um, next up. The audience checks out fairly quickly. Like, when I don't know if you, how often you guys go to baseball games, but when I do, usually around like the sixth or seventh inning, I've very often left the stands to go to like the clubhouse or get something to eat and like miss innings at a time that I just don't even worry about. Yeah, that's accurate. I went to a sporting event specifically to watch sports and then didn't even watch half the sport I went to because I got bored. Um, I don't like that half the players aren't even playing. Like, first off, obviously. Only one person on one team is batting at any time. Like, maybe one guy standing around on base. But that whole team is just sitting for half the game. I mean, that's true in almost any sport, right? I mean, you have your bench, but, like, stuff like soccer where, you know, they're running, you know the guys will run, like, a marathon and be out there the whole game. is pr- I like that better. Um, and even when they're on the field, half the people aren't doing anything. Like, t- you know, at any given point, 
9 out of 11 fielders are doing nothing. So that always kind of bothered me a little bit. And lastly, 9 innings just feels like a lot of repetition. Like, it's a lot of time to be doing the same boring thing over and over again. So, let's start off with the pitching. Um, You can make pitching more exciting, like with, you know, cannons or something. But again, I don't like the idea that, like, you start a play and then most of the time nothing happens. So... I propose we just use the already existing solution and have a t-ball and just play t-ball. <laughs> like you're going to get a play every time, which is the fun part of baseball. Obviously, this isn't a great solution because one, yes, it is too. It's going to get a little too easy. You think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my first thing was like, can people not hit it far enough? And then actually, no, because I don't have pro stats, but minor leaguers will sometimes have t-ball like competitions. And they can hit the ball, like, over 350 feet, which will go over, like, the foul line home run sections. So people are just going to get home runs fairly consistently. And probably At the pro level, probably everybody can just do it. Another fun side fact along those lines is they can actually throw the ball just as far, if not further, than they can tee it. <laughs> so there's, like, a bunch of times where, like, they'll just... You'll see players, like, from... Not during the game, of course, but, like they'll throw it from home plate over, like, the far home run wall. I'm like, that's it's pretty, pretty awesome. far. So if you if everyone hits a home run, the game's going to be all sorts of repetitive. So we got to find a way to make it interesting for the fans. So here's what we do. We take the whole field and basically turn it 180 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit the baseball into the stands instead of the field. <laughs> that's safe. Yeah, so two caveats. One... <laughs> We're gonna replace the baseball with like a handball painted like a baseball or something that's a good bit softer. And two, if the fans are the ones feeling the balls, admittedly, there's probably gonna be a significant home team advantage. <laughs> so I was looking at trying to fix these two problems. Um, so here's here's where I came, um, where I land on this. So if you actually enact this baseball change, and some guy who is a big sports baseball fan, comes over and he's like telling his kids, he's like, I remember when baseballs were hard. And the kids are like, wouldn't that hurt? And then he has to explain how baseball used to work. And it's going to sound really dumb in retrospect because I'm making baseball awesome and baseball right now is not great. Second, it's going to like the home team advantage problem is going to be sort of self-correcting because it's going to really encourage fans to travel to away games because being a fan at the stands is actually helping your team win. So there's going to be like a whole new thing to be like, I want to get out to, you know, New York because I really want to beat those fuckers and I can do my part. So then I had to work on getting fan feeling to actually work. And I didn't want to do it where just whoever catches the ball, you know, if it's a if it's your fan, you know, it's a point for your team. And if it's another fan, it's a point for that team. Because I think even that would kind of get boring because, you know, you're only, you're a low chance that you actually get to catch a ball yourself. Uh, even if every single ball is getting hit into the stands. So I think what you do, and this is how I solve the half the players aren't even playing problem, is you disperse the rest, anyone who's not batting, because the fielders aren't going to be useful anymore. Everyone who's not batting gets dispersed into the stands. So <laughs> <laughs> you have half the team dispersed wherever they want to in the stands. And the goal is for the fans if you're a fan of the home team, to get it to a home team player. And if you're a fan of the away team, you get it to an away team player. <laughs> and basically, whatever team gets the ball is decides how the play happens. <laughs> and I think there's going to be a lot of fun, like, fan moments where, like, some guy sees, uh, you know, his team, you know, his teams, I guess you could still call him the catcher, um, <laughs> you know, a few rows over, and he throws it over there, but he fucks up the throw, and another team's fan catches it and, like, throws it back the other way to his team guy. It's going to be buck wild and awesome. Maybe it's a little too exciting. Maybe some people actually get injured, but it'll just be part of watching the sport. <laughs> you just got to expect to get hurt in this sport. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know exactly how to incorporate. This is the one part of that was kind of just like, le- I forgot to think about before we started recording, but I just realized that I was going to have people run the bases and I wanted to make the bases just further apart to make these people run more than 90 feet. Um, Cause you know, in the actually do some activity when you're playing a sport professionally. So I was going to put the bases like all around the whole field. So you actually get to do some running. Also, I think fielding in the stands is going to take a bit longer than fielding in the field. Probably. Yeah. I'd imagine so you need so. some extra time. I guess if the away team gets it and the person's not at a base, then they're out. 
And if the home team gets it, sorry, the not batting team gets it, then I'm conf- I've confused myself. <laughs> 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 if the people who would normally fe- be fielding catch get the ball, and the person who's running is not on a base, it's an out. And if the team that's batting gets the ball, then they're safe wherever they are. There we go. You got it. <laughs> I solved it. Now, even this can get a little repetitive over the long term. So I think now that we've made the sport, I would say, a little bit more fun and a little bit less, like, serious and, like, statistic heavy, um, we can have some fun with the innings, I think. So maybe, like, you change the ball out or, like, do special fan things, like uh, empty out a section of the of the stadium and then like the ball gets hit there and everyone like rushes towards it, which now that I said it also sounds dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Safety has not been a concern of mine, but I think the best thing to just escalate the game as it progresses is just every, each one of the nine innings add one additional batter with an additional T. Oh God. <laughs> so inning one, one ball gets hit. Inning two, two balls get hit and so on and so forth. And I think that's just going to be a better version of baseball guys. I like that that you you started this episode involving like electric current shooting out in front of your feet on the beach, and then somehow got less safe. I would say it's a little. I think it's still okay safe. You know. <laughs> yeah, the cushy handballs. Perfect. That's <laughs> hey, almost you everything. Hit, yeah, I mean you can get hit by a handball pretty fucking hard, and it doesn't hurt. I guess that's true. And like, if you get a welt, it's like. You know, it's like you caught a foul ball. But but can you get hit by a 280-pound man who is a fan of the other team who's trying to get that ball from you afterwards? Uh. Oh, oh, God. Oh, man. Okay. My brain just figured it out. Okay. So the ball now has to light up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and, well, that's actually going to be good for night games anyway. It's going to be an important bit. But also, you take all the dangerous and hard seats and concrete and all that. Forget all that. All the stands at each section, each, like, height section is now a big ball pit. <laughs> oh god so you have to find the ball you find the glowing ball in the big ball pit <laughs> which that is fun you cannot tell me that won't be <laughs> the best improvement to the sport so can you guys top that i think i can get pretty close so i actually like baseball it's like one of my well i don't <laughs> in general i don't really watch sports that much but if i had to choose one it'd probably be either football or baseball but we Agreed to answer this question, so I came up with an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided to do this thing called pitching. It's got, you can throw it too far to the left three times, or, well, if you do it four times, they get a base. So I, I wanted to change it. I wanted to change baseball somehow. I wasn't exactly sure how to at first, but I looked at, like, the equipment that baseball has. They have gloves, they have hats, they have bats, and the bat part caught my interest i was like what other pe- what other things use bats and what i came up with were pinatas people use pinatas or use bats to hit pinatas so i'm going to add pinatas to baseball Ooh, yeah so this is how it's going to work first off all the indians are going to be timed just because that is one thing about baseball i agree is that it can get kind of slow so just timed innings solves that and then instead of pitching so the way that people usually do pinatas is they hang it from a string and someone can like pull it up while the guy is swinging at it if they want. So he's like can miss it and stuff. Mm-hmm. So the pitcher, instead of pitching a ball, he's going to be pulling the string and then the batter will be blindfolded because um, that's usually what people with pinatas do. And he will do the, the standard three spins with the blindfold on on home plate he'll stand on home plate instead of like in the batter's box and i actually imagine that there will be four so there'll be four pinatas surrounding him on home plate and the pitcher has control of all of them okay and he basically just tries to break the pinatas as fast as possible and when he breaks them oh if he misses three times then he's then he's out. But oh, if yeah, he, you gotta keep the classics. Yeah. But if he breaks one and they miss us three times, then it goes into play. And all the candy that fell out of that first pinata, he grabs into a bag, he collects it into a bag, and he runs to first. And at first plate, because we have to have the fielders do something, 
um, because there's no ball anymore. So at first plate, at first base, there is a cannon. And this is okay. this is a cannon, a candy cannon. So he's going to stuff all that candy into the cannon, and he's going to shoot it into the field. And all the fielders, instead of gloves, they're going to be wearing sombreros. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to try to catch as much candy as they can with the sombreros before it hits the ground. And oh, whatever man. whatever they catch in their sombrero gets thrown out and that's out of the game whatever lands on the ground goes towards the score of the batting team so that's how you score it um so i had four pinatas around home plate so if you break more than one pinata before you miss three times then you get more candy so the cannon at first base can fit as much candy as you're going to get from that first pinata and then if you have more candy then you run to second base and fill that cannon with whatever you got from the second pinata. And <laughs> whatever you got. Not necessarily candy in the second pinata. <laughs> well, yeah, just whatever, how much candy you got. <laughs> and that's basically how, like, doubles and triples are going to work. It just depends on how many pinatas you break before you miss three times. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the game, you basically just weigh all the candy and... Whatever team has the most amount of candy wins. What would be the ideal candy for your team to use? That's going to have like the, I guess, wildest aerodynamic properties to make it hard to catch in a hat. I don't. I feel know. like I feel like Laffy Taffy is going to spiral I was, strangely. I was just going to say Laffy Taffy because they're not all shaped the same. Yeah, Laffy <laughs> Taffy and like like oh oh um if you have like like the little like fun size bags of Skittles and M and M's. Those are going like, to they're going to shift around in the bag. Yeah, they're and, gonna, like, like flutter and stuff. And, yeah, yeah. Also, like Smarties <laughs> probably, because Smarties could also come open. Ooh, yeah, because they're not they're just like twisted. Yeah, but they don't weigh a lot, so you're going to have the weight problem. That's true. They're not going to go that far. They're going to be able to to, to pull the, the yeah. outfield end. So this this will be like part of the team strategy, I guess, is picking the type of candy. Yeah, you can go like all in on like big jawbreakers to try to get the maximum points per thing that lands, yeah. or you can go like the scatter. Like, what if you just put in two of those like five pound gummy bears? <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh yeah, I also forgot. I forgot the catcher because the catcher has to do something too. So I had the catcher stand by the home by home plate while the batter is batting, and there's gonna, instead of a batter's box, there's going to be a batter's circle. And the catcher can't go inside the, the batter circle, but he has to try to catch as much candy that comes out when he first breaks the pinata. And whatever he catches, the batter can't take with him. That makes sense. And if and if the catcher eats all the candy before the batter gets the first base, he's out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I guess like decorating the pinatas might be part of it too. Or you could just have like the mascot of the opposite team. Ooh, that's cool. That's a little rub, look like little rubbins. Yeah. So that was that was my improvements to the sport. I think I did better than Marcus. <laughs> I disagree a little bit. Mine would bit. be more entertaining to watch. Okay, I I would have agreed until I got to the ball pit. The ball pit I think puts mine slightly above yours. <laughs> oh, and the winning team. So whatever team wins, their candy goes to the fans. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Wait, the candy that landed on the ground or the candy that's in the hats? Uh, Let's say hat candy. I was going to say the ground candy. (laughs) (laughs) And you say my sport's not safe. (laughs) They're wrapped. Mostly. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so that's what I had. Ben, how how are you going to improve this sport? So I I feel like we have slandered baseball a lot in this podcast today. I haven't. Marcus has a lot. That's true. Marcus has particularly has slandered baseball a lot in this this podcast. And I'm going to say... What if I told you that baseball didn't actually need to be fixed? This sounds like I'm going to set you up and tell you how baseball is good. It's not. I don't actually like baseball that much, despite being the sports guy. Um, But baseball has already been fixed, just not in the U.S. So in 1907... If you're going to tell me to play fucking cricket... not cricket. In 1907, a, uh, a Finnish... A uh, former Olympic like track and field athlete named Lori Picala was studying in the U.S. and he attended a baseball game in Boston. Uh, and his thoughts after the game were as follows: 
fascinating game, a bit slow though, which is pretty prescient, honestly. Um, and he developed a sport based mostly on baseball in the 1920s as actually a military training exercise. Uh huh. Um, and that sport is called Pesapalo. It is actually the national sport of Finland. Um, it is. It still exists. <laughs> it still exists. It is still played. It, they're actually <laughs> until Finland sinks into the sea. It's still. It shall <laughs> they're exist. actually very into it in Finland. It's actually like a really big deal in Finland. It's mostly like baseball with a few minor differences. It's still someone throwing a ball and someone hang, hanging the ball with a bat, and there's still three bases and home plate. Um, there's a couple of major differences, I guess, actually, um, and I'll mostly focus on those. Um, but but yeah, so so as you both kind of mentioned, the biggest issue with baseball is that it's too slow. Um, so so every year since 2012, the average length of a baseball game has been over three hours in the major league baseball Ugh. which is absurd and then even beyond just like the total length yeah a lot of the time during it there's not a whole lot happening you know it only really gets exciting when the ball is put in play and people are running around and shit um so just length of time the average length of a game of pace apollo at least in 2014 that was the number i could find was two hours 18 minutes so that's a lot better oh yeah so one other problem with like the length of baseball too and i'll get to the i'll get to the big rule change at some point but i'm sort of lead you into these gently um there's kind of what I like to call the blowout problem in baseball, which say your team gets like just absolutely shelled like the first first or second inning, you're down like 12 to nothing. You know that the team is going to lose, but you still have to sit through the other seven innings of baseball. And there's like, technically they can come back, but it almost never happens. So what if there is still something to play for? And Pace Apollo is still played in innings. There are eight innings, but they're divided into two halves. And basically, in order to win, you have to win both halves. And then if it's still, if like one team wins one half and the other team, win, team wins the other, you do like a one inning, you know, extra inning thing. And there's a weird like shootout thing after that that's very complicated and I didn't fully understand. But so it's basically nice... just two separate games. Exactly. And you kind of got to win both of them, which is kind of nice. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you get blown up in the first inning. Well, you know, still got the other one to play for. So that's cool. Um, and let's get to sort of the more obvious changes. So let's talk about uh, the design of the field, because that's kind of an, an important thing. So, you know, in baseball, you had this 90-foot diamond, where it's, you know, 90 feet from home to first, and then first to second, and second to third, and third to home. Um, in Pace Apollo, uh, all these these exact these dimensions are a little approximate, because I couldn't find, like, an exact listing, but I did find a diagram with a legend on it that said how far 30 feet was, and I had to kind of work off of that <laughs> um so so the shape of the field is basically think of like you know like when you draw a house and you're a kid and it's like the square with a triangle on top uh-huh it's that if the square or a long rectangle so you basically have a triangle at like that's the point where the point of it is home plate and then it's like a like 120 feet uh toward or sorry there's long sides coming out from home plate that are like 150 feet long and then a shorter side that's 120 feet long like between them and then it extends past that is the outfield so you might be thinking hey ben you said there are four bases but then you say it's a triangle what the fuck so first base is if you look left of that triangle about halfway up that line so 70 feet away or so is first base then second base is the right corner about 120 feet away from that mm. so yes you're running back across the field to second base Third base is then 120 feet straight across the field back to the other left corner of the triangle. And then home plate, you just run sort of down around and it winds up being about 140, 150 feet. So that's, you know, pretty weird. And you're probably thinking, hey, so how does pitching work? Because the first to second baseline is right in the middle of the diamond or, you know, triangle, whatever. So the pitcher, uh, and this is where things get a little buck wild. Uh, the pitcher actually stands next to the batter and throws the ball straight up. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Dad! <laughs> so, yeah, so the pitcher, instead of throwing away, or throwing, you know, staying far away and throwing the ball at them, they stand right next to them, and they had to throw it at least a meter above their head, and then get out of the way. <laughs> and run. Run basically, out of the way. Yeah, ba- basically, you get, it's, you get three strikes, but a strike is just any time... Whenever when you hit the ball, you don't actually have to run if you don't want to, unless it's your third strike. If you just don't run, it just counts as a strike until you like get the hit you want. 
And the idea is basically that it's about mm. trying to place your hits where you want to be to advance runners. And it goes much faster because the ball always goes in play. So my original solution is actually good. It's actually pretty good. close to the, just... <laughs> the excellent finished version of baseball. The, the finished version, if you will. <laughs> exactly. And then sort of a nice other little extra wrinkle. I know you brought the fact that, that half the players aren't even like on the field, Marcus. Mm-hmm. So one fun thing about uh, Pace of Hollow is that all of the players on the batting team who are not currently batting stand in a half circle around the batter and pitcher and heckle the pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna role. ask if the i was gonna ask if the pitcher could heckle the batter while they were like you know tossing the ball to them like nope you fucking suck <laughs> but no i guess it goes the other way yep and yeah and apparently it's a very exciting game because it's a lot of oh, oh hold on there's also some other fun rules so actually there's not home runs traditionally um if you actually hit the ball too far so like the field extends out like 315 feet, which is a little shorter than like the outfield walls in most baseball stadiums. Um, if you hit it past that, it's actually like a foul ball. But if you reach third base, that's a home run. And what's fun about it too is that, so you get to third base, your team gets a run, and then you stay on third base and can still score from there. <laughs> oh, double runs. But it also involves running like way further than a home run, I think, is actually, actually I think. Right, hold on. Oh, yeah. Wait, 70... Math is hard. Hold on. It's like 70. Uh, oh, no, it's a little shorter because it'd be like like 310 feet. So pretty far, but uh, I guess doable. I don't know. I mean, it's got to be an infield home run every time now. Pretty much. Yeah. But yeah. So really, I think that overall Pace Apollo solves basically all the problems we have with baseball because it's shorter. It's more exciting. There's heckling as like almost part of the rules which is excellent. Um, what's going to think? Oh, also, so the way the managers communicate with their teams, they have these little fans of colored, like there's like six or seven, like different colored, like little flags on them. They put up in different arrangements to tell them things. Oh, like one flag says B and one flag says better. Right. <laughs> yes. That's exactly how it goes. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. I would argue that every problem that exists in baseball already has been solved by Pace Apollo. And I think we could implement at least some of these in actual baseball without anyone. Well, people would notice, but I don't care. Because be yeah, they, they might notice the bases. Yeah, the bases would probably be a pretty big tip off. <laughs> All problems have been solved, but it hasn't caught on. Yeah. Also, it's funny because you listed like the like the, the four problems that it solves. And it's literally my list of four problems yep. I had. Yep. I, I noticed that when you answered where you uh, said your question. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you didn't really answer the question. You just stole someone else's answer. Uh, well, so this is this is where we get to an absurd reality, which is we could improve baseball by playing a different sport. <laughs> the end. Yes. <laughs> just the don't end. play baseball. Don't play baseball. We play are, this more fun version of baseball instead. We are, as you might say, finished. <laughs> yeah, I made the same joke twice. Get fucked. <laughs> Yeah, tune in next week where we're going to be doing our spooky Halloween episode. Spooky. It's, it's so spooky. We're going to answer <laughs> super duper spooky questions like, what if you could perfectly train spiders? And what if you were a monster? If you have any questions, comments, or your own hypothetical idea you want us to answer, let us know. You can reach us by email at absurdhypotheticals at gmail.com. Send us a tweet at absurdhype. That's H-Y-P-E hype. Visit our website, www.nerdchomp.com slash absurdhypotheticals. And if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. It really helps out the show and lets us keep making it for you. 